Yeah, you're going to be out. That's fine. <laughs> so, okie dokie. I, I belong in the kitchen. I like so my funny. kitchen. Nothing wrong with that. All right. This is Amanda LaPlante. You're listening to Get Real the Heal on KWRHLP 92.9 FM, and we are back with Becky Schoenig and Greg Owens, co-owners of Symbol, a healthy lifestyle, food as medicine, fast casual restaurant here in the St. Louis area. Welcome That's back. a lot of words. And, and, and with three locations. With three locations. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah, so you're um, Kirkwood, right? Chesterfield. Chesterfield and St. Charles. Yep. Yeah. And... And I was actually at your Chesterfield location last night. Yes, yeah. you were. You yeah. were our guest speaker for our healthy hour. Thanks again for having me. That was so much fun. Good. Thank you. The feedback was very, very good. In fact, I got, I think, three or four messages from people afterward thanking us for doing it and what a great speaker you were. Oh, that's so kind. That's great. I'm yeah. glad people found value in it and that uh, they got to come out and hang out at, at your Chesterfield location of Symbol. And tell us a little bit about, um, I've got a few things that I want to touch on in this segment, but let's start with your healthy hours that you're doing. Sure. So I dove into what the functional Fridays are, where we're talking with uh, practitioners and doctors about specific ailments and diseases out there that are affected by food. And then we created our healthy hour, which is one time a month. And that is usually a health coach or somebody who has a personal story revolving around their health and how food was related to it. Um, I like the coaches coming in to speak. It kind of gives them a platform and an audience and also those that have, you know, profound stories because then it makes it real for somebody else to say, to see and to hear that there is light on the other side. And thank you for supporting health coaches. Yeah, you're welcome. I love coaches. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's my background. I did it for 15 years, and I know the struggle that so many can have when it comes to marketing themselves, and we have a great platform, um, and it, there is a huge need for well, it. it. And it's definitely, that's probably one of the most rewarding things that, for me anyway, is when we have a you know, family or a person or um, you know, just a, a group of people that aren't able to go out or aren't able to do the sort of things that I don't want to say everyone can do, but normal people do. And they can all sit down and eat together. Uh, you know, we've had, and we've had some real strange ones where it's like, you know, there's one person that maybe is just a vegan by choice. Then there's a father who just wants to get something to eat. Um, we have one, one group that they had two daughters and both daughters had really odd allergies that were very different. And the mother was like, we never can go somewhere and, and have dinner out together. Um, and th those are the kind of rewarding things. Yeah. Especially when people come in and they have something and they don't even know that it's okay for them to have this food because we've done the back the back end of the work. Right. Yeah. And, and so, and I want to, that's actually a good opportunity to circle back. And I want to talk about, as a restaurant, um, you, you've, you've got a challenge, right? We talked about that on the first half of the show with marketing as a healthier option. Um, but I want to talk about some of the marketing terms that are thrown out there, right? Because healthy, eating healthy can mean a lot of different things, right? Depending on, on what someone's dealing right. with. Right. Uh, we purposely never, until we rebranded, we never really used that moniker um, because for most people, healthy means cardboard, flat, uh, granola, you know, tree-hugging, squirrel-loving. Um, it's, <laughs> it's bland. Bland, you know, boring, you know. So it's like, it, it, it's sort of like the kiss of death. You really don't want to do that. There's some terms out there that you try and avoid. Um, we, we have enough of a following that we can get away with it now. Um, not being super pompous, but recently we've kind of differentiated ourselves. There's lots of places out there saying they're healthy, and in some regards, they're, they're health. Well, they're focused. healthier choices Other than a choices. lot of them out there. Yeah. We are a place where people who know how to eat healthy come to. Right. You can go eat healthy, or if you know how to eat healthy, you can come to us. So let's talk about some of the other terms that are thrown around a lot. Oh. Um, it, we were talking during the break about the term organic and it's why lovely. that's problematic. That one will times. be slapped across your face a few times, I think. Yeah, so um, <laughs> organic is, is, especially now, strongly regulated. Uh, I can remember 20 years ago in Florida, 
good, bad, or indifferent. Oh, you want organic tomatoes? There's a sticker. There you go. Now pay me more. Um, that was, I mean, that was a legit thing that happened, and probably still does. Uh, you know, there's always bad actors. Um, you know, it's it costs a ton of money. There's tons of regulations. Small farmers, by and large, cannot afford to do it. Um, so what does that mean? That means the big boys can afford to do it. And then by doing it, they also dictate what it takes to be organic and further keep out competition. Hate to say it, but um, it's, it's a mega, mega business. Billions and billions of dollars. Yeah, and it runs clear up the political spectrum. Absolutely. So um, we like traceability, sustainability, knowing who we get our products from. Uh, we try and get U.S. grown as much as possible. We try and get local as much as possible. You know, we're coming to the end of the season real quick here. Um, it's, you know, towards the end of August. We're going to have two or three months of growing if we're really lucky. And only certain things, too. You know, certain products just don't grow well um, here in the Midwest. Um, we're great at corn and soybean and wheat. <laughs> um, but, you know, there's other things that just don't grow well. Um, you know, it gets too hot for a lot of greens in the middle of summer. So that has to come from somewhere else. Um, we try and use very reliable vendors and always have an emphasis on, you know, making sure it's a whole product. We, we almost always, and almost everything we get in is whole food product. So because of, because we work with the local farmers, you won't see our organic on our no, menu. No. You won't see us advertising or marketing anything as organic. But all of the farmers and a lot of what we bring in is organic practices, um, which is what is more valuable to us. So when you when somebody gets stuck on the word organic, I think the question they should be asking is where did this come from and how is it grown or how is it raised? Because that's more valuable than is and the word organic. You're, you're starting to see ethically raised for meats or humanely raised. Um, Antibiotic free. And, oh, written. wow, really? Yeah. You know, there's lots of things. That, <laughs> yeah, I, love, I love the stuff that gets plastered on labels that, well, you're, you know, antibiotics and hormones are, are most of the time not allowed for certain things anyway, but they'll put it out there as they're doing the good the good deed. Um, yeah, it, for us, it definitely is a matter of using whole food ingredients, getting the best that we can, how we can and you know and at a price that we can then you know make our food affordable um, we kind of touch on it and break you know restaurants don't get this huge discount on food that everyone thinks um, it is very expensive for us just like it's very expensive for you know the individual to go to the grocery store and buy stuff um, especially a smaller operation like us you know we need you know, butts in the seat. We need, you know, we need people to come and eat um, because our margins aren't very big. Um, our average restaurant, if you make three to five percent, that's good. Yeah. Wow. You know, and I want to touch back on, I think we covered a lot of this, but we did also talk about local. Local. Advantages. Yeah. To, what does that mean? It, you know, local is just like anything else. You have to decide on your own. Um, Industry-wise, eh, if you can get there in a day, you're local. So you're basically 300 mile radius, roughly, um, and that's where it's where you, you know that's where you pick it up. Uh, so if you just local, you know, Google local or whatever on uh, some of your order forms, there'll be certain products that'll show up like, uh, okay, so it's a corn oil that comes from Iowa. Okay, but then where did the corn that they made the corn oil come from? It could be you know Nebraska, it could be Montana, it could be way out west. You have no idea actually. It's just the point of origin of the actual product as you buy it. Um, for us, local means, you know, Matt at Buttonwood Farms, who we get our chicken from, they deliver it every Tuesday. Um, it's what kind of a little bit of an inside joke, but it's clucking on Monday, cooking on Tuesday. I mean, it is <laughs> oh, fresh and local. Um, we we kind of joked about having a video feed out of this pastured chickens, and people could just watch the chickens out there and have a little countdown of oh, how many days until they were in the restaurant. Oh, man, pick your uh, chicken like yeah, you yeah, you know, yeah, there you go. Oh. Um, yeah, for us, local definitely means um, knowing who it is and where it's from. And we're very honest about, you know, where we get our stuff from. We don't, we, we use nice, we use good products we don't have to hide. Let's talk about products, too. Mm -hmm. um, and, and about your, you've got Symbol Success Meals. 
Right, so start where you like on those, but I want to touch on. Well, the simple success meals kind of came about when Ashley with Feed Your Vitality was closing up her business. We're one of the, I think, I don't know, we may only still be the only certified shape reclaimed restaurant in St. Louis, but Ashley was catering to that clientele with personalized meals. And when she was shutting down to do, to head more into coaching and consulting, she asked if we would be interested in taking over. So we identified a niche area and some people that were in need. So we kind of took that on just a couple months ago and we focused specifically on Shape Reclaimed and Paleo specifically. Um, we haven't gone in any other directions and we have not marketed it much at all. No. We just kind of had been putting our feelers out there, seeing where things are, but I think that program will definitely grow as time goes on. And then our sauces, um, we created our AIP, our autoimmune. When we say autoimmune, we mean eliminating the nightshades, the tomatoes, the peppers, Those the spices. Ones, yeah. yeah, and we've created the no tomato pasta sauce and the no tomato barbecue sauce for those people specifically. Um, but it's been a challenge to get those packaged for distribution because co-packing facilities don't use whole food when they do it. <laughs> yeah, a lot of times. So there's a, just a huge difference when we, a processor versus a co-packer or a blender. Um, and then getting, yeah, whole raw food ingredients. It's, it's just like, um, you know, a car. You know, a piece comes from this plant, a piece comes from that plant, it all comes together at one place, gets fabricated. That's how most sauces and most food stuffs are done on a bigger corporate level. You know, it's, one place doesn't just get all the raw ingredients and build it all right there. It a little bit comes from here, a little bit comes from there. And for us, that's again a, a traceability or an understanding what we have and control over what goes into the product. You know, because the first thing, well, can I use this? Can I use tomato paste? Can I use uh, well, corn syrup? Of course, everyone wants to use corn syrup. Um, you know, how can I? How can we? I don't want to say they want to cheap it, but they want to economize it. Right. Um, and for us, we are kind of go against that. We've so I think we're trying to go old school again and go back to where our oh, yeah. grandparents, all these parents food, yeah. used to cook food. And it's funny because all these foods, they're, they're not new foods, but how they're made today is not at all how they were made 50 years ago. So why why can't we make it more like we did 50 years ago? Absolutely, yeah. It just it just pull it back to things that the human body was made to eat. Yeah. Yeah. Knows how to process whole, whole real food. <laughs> <laughs> I know that the concept is not amazing. What yeah. that can do, amazing <laughs> yeah. what that can do. Well, I want to thank you again for coming on today, uh, Becky Shonick and Greg Owens, co-owners of Symbol. And uh, can you let everybody know how they can reach out for more information? Give us your locations. Sure. Uh, our website again is www.mysymbol, m y s y m b o w l dot com. Our three locations, our first one's in Kirkwood. They're at the corner of Geyer and Manchester, Chesterfield Long Road in the Valley, and then St. Charles over by Bass Pro Shop. And if they want to follow you on Facebook? Me, personally, you can't. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Becky Schoenig, B-E-C-K-Y, Schoenig, S-C-H-O-E-N-I-G. And then awesome. the Facebook page is what for the business? Uh, symbol. Just symbol. Just symbol on the Facebook page. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Thanks again. This has been Amanda LaPlante. You've been listening to Get Real to Heal on KWRH LP 92.9 FM. For more information on my health coaching services or to contact me, please find me online at amandalaplante.com or reach out 314-583-6749. And feel free to listen to past episodes of this show at Facebook at Get Real to Heal or soundcloud.com slash Get Real to Heal and have a great day. You sound so professional. You're sweet. Oh, you do. You're so great. <laughs> You're making me look Thanks like for that. watching. <laughs>